All right, welcome back to another edition of the Penn State Blitz here on Penn Live. Coming up this week, Greg Pickle, it's a big show. It is. Uh, we got the spring game coming up, but we're going to talk about one of Penn State's best young players, Michael Parsons. We're going to talk about maybe our biggest takeaways, Greg, of spring practices. And then we're going to provide, I think, uh, an offensive and defensive kind of breakdown, maybe what, to, what we're looking for in the game. <laughs> Joe Hermit and I uh, had a chance to meet up with Micah Parsons, Penn State's second-year linebacker, uh, about a week ago, a week to 10 days ago. Uh, really enjoyed my chat with him. Uh, I, think, uh, I think he was made available on conference calls this week. Uh, a couple, just a couple things, Greg. I don't know uh, what your impressions were of Micah's first year, but I just don't think the Penn State fan base realizes that, you know, when you, when you have to learn a new position, and he really did. They, they moved him around before he was finally at outside linebacker. He was really just kind of a rush end uh, at Harrisburg High School. It's just going to take a while because the way that Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator, coaches, you know, it's all about technique and reading keys and, you know, you know don't, you know, assignment football. And it, it takes a while. I was really struck by the relationship that Mike has built with Brent Pry. And I, I just think that when you lead – when you lead the team in tackles, when you only make one start, and you're kind of in a timeshare, it speaks to what's coming down the road because he, he just started to figure it out, I think, in the last month of the season. I just think, uh, I just think when we see Micah Parsons' A game, it's going to bring to mind some of the very best uh, linebackers to ever play at Penn State. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think the thing that I took away from your series over the weekend was that there, Penn State may have been – on shaky ground to land Micah Parsons yeah. from the outside perspective. But when you really think about the relationship he built with specifically Brent Pry, but right. also James Franklin, right. Bob, there was probably not a great chance Penn State was ever going to actually lose out on him, even though Georgia pushed late, even though Oklahoma pushed late. I know that both of those schools were really, it looked like, and yeah. Mike even said this past week right before the White game, that you know both those schools were calling him right as, mm -hmm. you know, as he was getting ready to announce that he was going to Penn State. So... I know it seemed like those schools were making a big push, but, yep. Bob, I just can't imagine that the relationship he has with those two guys would have led him anywhere else. Yeah, and I, I want to give Micah credit. I think Micah was very smart about the decommit. He got a chance to visit some really nice places and get hosted by some very nice you know, coaching staffs, and I think he really enjoyed, I think, maybe taking his visits, and I think that was maybe part of his decision as well. Well, you know, I'm only going to get a chance to do this once in my life, so let's, why, don't, why don't I enjoy it? I feel like he did, and I think that maybe we should give him credit for that uh, as well. Now, let's, let's uh, move ahead now, Greg. Uh, second down? Second down it is. Good catch. Um, <laughs> just, just your thoughts on maybe what we have kind of learned or what you've learned from the spring uh, media availabilities. We, we get to see a little bit of practice, but not a lot. But just kind of the message from James Franklin and maybe from some of his key players what are some of the things that stood out to you? Yeah, a couple of things jump out first and foremost. Cam Brown definitely is finally carrying the weight that I think he's meant to carry and has been trying to carry for a couple of years now. It's not that he played poorly without it, but I think it's going to make a pretty big difference in how he plays in 2019. That's jumped out. I think the Journey Brown hype is real, too. Whether it translates yeah. to fall Saturdays will obviously be seen come August 31st mm -hmm. when Idaho comes to town. But at the end, of, the end of the day, anyone that was doubting what was coming out of the program about him, I think can believe at this point that he, he's the real deal. Yeah, a couple things uh, that stood out to me. One of them I think is a little bit funny. It's pretty clear to me that James Franklin doesn't want Justin Shorter much more than 230 pounds. Yeah. He, uh, we saw him, I think, last week running around a little bit. He looks good. Uh, he's had some health issues in the past. But I think James is trying to send a message there that 230 – uh, is about where they want him because of route running and getting too big and maybe keeping your quickness. He sent that message. And also, uh, we talked about this at the beginning of spring. Uh, I think it was a big spring for Rasheed Walker. And all indications are that he's been running with the first team uh, for most of the spring. I hope we get to see him in the, in the blue-white uh, blue game coming up. But I think his development, uh, with them losing Ryan Bates, I think his development was really critical to maybe where the offense needs to get uh, as far as the run game and, and, and the pass game. Obviously, we can also talk a little bit about the, the health of Tommy Stevens, but you, you had a chance to talk with him. And I thought maybe 
that some of the things that you wrote about were very interesting. Yeah, he was really insightful. I mean, he doesn't really pull any punches. He'll tell you exactly what he's thinking, if he likes something, if he doesn't yeah. like something. He doesn't really care for the fact that there's questions about his durability. And I <laughs> can appreciate yeah. that, but at the same time, you right. know, it's great that you never missed a practice in high school. It's great that you didn't miss time when you were behind, right. you know, Trace McSorley. But now people want to know if those things are going to be a problem. And he was very blunt and very clear that, no, whatever is wrong with him, we still don't know. It's been called a significant injury. It needed surgery. Mm -hmm. He was very blunt and clear about the fact that it was fixed right this time, and he feels like he's going to be good to go. All right, quarter number three here on the Penn State Blitz. Let's talk Penn State offense uh, in the spring game. You know, the game itself is never is never going to be probably a good game. The, the, the rosters are a little bit stacked. And right. It usually ends up being not competitive. You're not going to see, you're going to see limited uh, snaps or maybe they're better players or some players will not play. So on the offensive side, uh, Greg, who, who are some of the guys that you would like to see uh, do some things in the game? Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, we're not expecting to see Tommy Stevens, right? So he's done some seven-on-seven seven work. I just can't imagine. Remember he suited up last year and warmed up and then never played. I could see another yeah. another example like that. So, you know, it would be interesting to see Sean Clifford throw the ball and some of these young running backs yeah. get a chance. I want to see what Noah Cain can do, quite frankly. He'll yeah. probably be playing on the other team, the team that's not loaded with stars. Yeah. Um, so he'll be going against some of the best competition. Frankly, I think that's the best team to watch. I mean, you can watch K.J. Hamler go against guys that are down the roster. Mm -hmm. You can watch – you know, uh, some of the offensive linemen win battles against defensive linemen that are down the roster. But I think it's more interesting to see how some of those guys that are down the roster do against the starting and second team talent. Yeah, like I, like I mentioned, uh, Rasheed Walker is a guy I'll, I'll be watching a little bit. I think that Mike Miranda, the other projected new starter, I think you saw what you needed to see for him last year uh, when he came into the game on, on a few occasions. I think they really like him. Uh, I'll be looking at the. I want to actually see Will Levis a little bit because he is, he is an impressive looking uh, yeah. quarterback, and I know that he's got a big arm. I'm hoping we'll see him. So I want to see Justin Shorter, <laughs> and I have a my, my pick for the offensive uh, player of the game is going to be Daniel George. I know you have another. Ooh, interesting. I think you have another receiver in mind, and I think it's also, also named Daniel. It's also a great pick, but I think one of those two guys could be the player of the game. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just. Ever since James Franklin called Carl Nassib as a spring, remember way back when, and he's been pretty darn good about that lately. He's given some guys praise, but none more than Dan just sent him the walk-on from Dave Jones land. So uh -huh. uh, we'll Down see. But County Daniel, Daniel, Down George, County, Daniel George is a good pick, too. I think that uh, I think it, it very well could be one of those guys, and uh, it should be interesting. But the defense should be pretty interesting, too. Yeah. Now, Over or under? Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> so, so as we move to the defensive part of the equation mm -hmm. you know we just talked about Micah Parsons I would imagine we'll see him because he's still a young player right <clears throat> I they, they might put Etor Gross Matos in bubble wrap just because it would be smart yeah I just don't know <clears throat> I don't know what what else he needs to show Penn State right. he looks like he is is going to be even better excuse me this year you know a guy that we never really we we've been waiting to see been waiting to see, but we really haven't seen a Shane Simmons. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be ready to play. I think he's missing time in spring. He's a guy that I think uh, I'd really like to see. And also, you know, uh, how about a guy like Charlie Catcher at linebacker? We yeah. haven't seen a lot of him. I hope he's healthy. Um, and also, I think there still is, Greg, a competition at safety. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to be Sutherland. I'm not sure if it's going to be Lamont Wade. Um, there are you know, I, I don't know. I think Keaton Ellis, the true freshman, is a guy. I would hope we'll get to see him uh, on the defensive side. But those are some of the things I'm looking for on defense. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one guy I'll point to in fourth down here is a third down guy, Shaka Tony. Uh, I see I what you did that, there. That was pretty I, good. Yeah, I, he's, well, he looked. We saw last week at practice the strip sack. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, Etor stripped it and Shaka mm -hmm. recovered it. I think he looked like he's playing a little bit faster this year, but it could have just been that one practice rep. That's the one thing that between the pr open practice and what the, every everyone gets to see at the blue white game, there's a lot of reps in between that that's on coaches' film that no one gets to see. So it's hard to say sometimes. I'll be curious to see if he looks bigger though in pads than what we saw last year because I think he's going to have to be if he's going to start. You mentioned Saint Shane Simmons as well. Uh, Daniel Joseph's a guy that has got a lot of praise this year, so he'll be interesting, I think, to keep an eye on. And then, you're right, that safety battle is interesting. I don't know if we'll get any clear sense of who's ahead mm -hmm. besides how they break the roster up, 
But uh, the one thing we do know is that Sean Clifford and Will Levis don't mind airing it out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see a lot of those two guys. So I would expect both all safeties to be busy on Saturday. Uh, just to note, Tony uh, lost some weight. He's 236, at least on the, on the roster, to begin spring. And also, we didn't mention Micah Parsons' favorite defensive teammate, Jason Awe. That's right. And they're, they're burgeoning competition to see who's going to be faster this spring. Micah is confident he's going to be running in the 4-4s four this summer. <clears throat> uh, oh, I, I, I would like to see that race, but uh, I, I think that those guys have developed a nice little uh, competition, and I think it's motivating both of them. I think Jason is a player that can really – when James Franklin says it's the best defensive end room he's had in 20-some years, it's not just about Etor Gross Matos. We don't know if Shane Simmons is going to be healthy. I, I think he said that feeling really good about Jason and also Shaka. So that's, a, that's definitely a position group, I think, to watch not only in the spring – but in August and early in September. All right. You got so some bragging to do, before, I believe. Before we go, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to. Overtime. I just wanted to just real quick uh, just uh, remind everybody that two weeks ago <laughs> on video, I did predict that the Virginia Cavaliers would win the NCAA basketball championship. I don't know if we have a clip. Do we have a clip? No, we're not there yet. But there, it is on video. You might see it. And I just wanted to say, as we, Greg, as we, as we kind of mm -hmm. wrap up this edition of the Penn State Blitz, uh, you're welcome, America. So uh, we'll be back with some more good video probably later in the week. I'm anxious to uh, do a little video work, hopefully, with Dave Jones on Saturday. The weather looks like it's going to cooperate, Greg. Yep. Um, and I do, I do think that the blue team is probably going to be heavily favored. <laughs> but I don't think that's that big of a bold prediction. So I think from, from both of us to all of you, we will have a fine Blue-white recap coming up for you in a couple of days.